Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka and it's time for another Twitter thread. All right, today we're talking about time cards. So when the new time rules were implemented, they were controversial to say the least. Instead of doing turns, now when a match ends, duelists proceed to the end of the current phase and then check the life point totals of both players. If one player is up in life points, then they are the winner. This has caused a significant amount of individuals to play something in the sideboard called time cards. Uh, many archetypes have these internally. Uh, they're being designed with them in mind from the last couple of sets onwards. But a lot of archetypes need a way to get ahead of their opponents in a main phase in which they go to time. So today I'm asking you, what are the worst time cards you've ever seen played? And we're beginning with one of my favorites. Uh, I play a little bit of Abyss Actor casually. I like the deck a ton, but it just doesn't have what it takes to keep up with the modern metagame. It's one of those Pendulum decks, though, that does a mainline combo and has enough space to play non-engine, which is why I enjoy it. But one card that it can play is Abyss Script Opening Ceremony. Usually this is just a card you're sending in order to put an Abyss Actor from your extra deck back into your hand via the effect of Curtain Razor, but you can also use it to gain 500 life points for each abyss actor monster you control that's right it's got a life gain effect and nothing else uh i activated this in a local once and my opponent uh then got to their main phase before time was called and tried to scarlight me out of the game uh but i was just a little too ahead <laughs> i had gained too much life points off opening ceremony all right let's see what you all came up with but First, this video is sponsored by Pyramid. Okay, I'm a little confused about this one. So by now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Pyramid. They're the company that makes the artisan field cloths that have become extremely popular in Yu-Gi-Oh! over the past few years. I've worked with them a couple of times, both during the subathons to make some incredibly cool field cloths to celebrate the channel, and during normal business hours to make some extremely cool merch. By the way, if you're interested in more than that, we're going to be putting up a couple of new designs in early December, the same time as the MCS finale, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Pyramid's collaborating with Spellground. The old heads in the community probably remember Spellground as the gold standard when it came to two-player cloths back in the day. And hearing that they're collaborating with the new hotness in Pyramid is like... It's like a Nike Adidas collab. Anyway, they sent me some cloths and we're gonna be raffling off some of them, but not this one, idiot. This is all mine. If you want one of your own, these are gonna be dropping during Saturday. That's P-V-R-A-M-I-D.com. It's like it's 2007 and I'm being waxed by a guy who is clearly cheating all over again. I was at a locals and someone was telling me this is a good tech for tier in game three. Was this real? Okay, Maple. So uh, this is kind of a hard thing to say. Uh, when time cards first started being something that people were playing, the first thing people did was sort of search every single card that gains you life points. It does gain you a thousand when it's sent to the graveyard. Additionally, it's not once per turn, which means you can shuffle it back with like a Mudora or a Keldo and then mill it again, but you do have to mill it. And for that reason, it's really not good. Rather than rely on randomly milling a Skullmark Ladybug, which a lot of people were doing during this period, decks evolved to just use Beatrice to send a Volcanic Scattershot or Sprint to do so. Cowboy is kind of strange because I think it's just like flat out the best time card. Almost every deck can make a rank four. I mean, I've seen everyone from Rescue Ace to, of course, Pendulum citing this bad boy. Fire... Can I... Can I... Am I allowed to... Am I allowed to say the name of this card? This card was playable as the time card in Mathmech. This was during a format that included Sprite, which had a time card in Red Resonator, and Tierlament, which had multiple time cards. The third best deck, Mathmech, desperately needed a way to close out games in which it could only get to the main phase. Fire, C word, can during either player's turn be discarded to inflict a thousand damage to your opponent. Why did it play this card? Well, Alan Burchett actually has a bunch of effects, and if you detach three materials, something you can do off of a single circular, you can add a level four monster from your deck to your hand. Any deck that can theoretically make a Link 4 has access to a time card in Agave Dragon. So there's a Link 4 monster. If it's Link summoned, you can apply these effects in sequence depending on the type of monsters in the graveyards. And it begins by saying you can inflict 100 damage to your opponent for each dragon. Finally, you gain 400 life points for each worm. So all you have to do is pivot through one of those types on your way to Agave Dragon, and you can burn or gain just a, a teensy weensy little bit of life points. That said, I don't think I've ever seen this played as a serious time card past, I guess, the weekend of its original print. 
Dragon Link has better things to do in Scarlight, and everyone else extra deck space is too tight, and they have better, more easily accessible time cards. Imagine if Gage could lose to time. So, fun fact, um, at some Edison events that have been hosted by Konami, rather than do uh, the then 0, 1, 2, 3 time rules, they have used existing Konami time guidelines, which means that Caius is not only one of the strongest cards in the format, he might also be a time card. <laughs> I would run Air Hummingbird in Flu because it was searchable off Robina. <laughs> oh man. Someday they're going to make a, a Neo Spatian Fusion monster for this card, but I... Not today. Dyer says, back when I was looking for a time card and generator, I tried citing three of this. Unsearchable three of, so I could go into C9. Needless to say, it never came up once. Rank up magic, quick chaos. Target a number Xyz you control. You are going to tag from a Dyson Sphere into a Chaos Dyson Sphere. No. We ain't FTKing. We're just doing 600. Yeah, I think chat's absolutely correct. You could literally just play Sparks. If you're citing in an unsearchable three of spells exclusively to win in time and for no other reason, just play like emergency provisions or something. This is one that I recognize, shockingly. Before we ran out of extra deck space with the release of Photon Hypernova and Cyberstorm Access, Branded would send a light Performa Pal from deck to graveyard with Branded Fusion to make Albion then banish it and the Performa Pal to make Performa Pal Gatling Ghoul, which can inflict 200 damage to your opponent for each card on the field. Awful. Really, really miserably bad. Yeah, Gustav Max also has the uh, added benefit of being larger than any other time card. Sometimes you'll get into a position where you get to your main phase, execute a combo that burns your opponent for a little, but there's still a couple of minutes on the clock, so you do pass back to your opponent and they get through some part of their setup combo in their main phase. And if that happens, you have to ensure that your time card hits harder than their time card. This guy hits like harder than anything. Am I crazy? I feel like the censored version is a little more sexy, right? There's some coming out of it. Why is he sounding on the uncensored version of this? Started out as a joke at a small regional, but now I actually do side this as a thrust target. It's just the funniest thing to win off it. You can go further. Like if you're going to thrust for a burn card, it's got to be sparks, right? I think, isn't there a 100 damage card too? Muyan Curry. Well, that's a, that's a life gain. Well, Yugi boy, it looks as if your attack had connected. I'd be done for. But it didn't. The classic. After tier bans, a few of my locals kept the dream alive by playing various engines with the tier Shizu stuff like Shadow. I was at a case tournament that went into time. We were told to finish the phase. The man foolish burial scatter shot causing me to lose. Uh, it is funny that like tier related decks have like 55 different ways to send scattershot to the graveyard, but one of them is foolish burial. So sometimes you just go foolish send scattershot pass. <laughs> I played lab at Euros this year and I was theoring it with a friend who was far more experienced than I was. I've never been more disappointed when he handed me a copy of this and told me we had to play it. Altar for tribute. Isn't there a better version of this card? Isn't destruct potion the exact same card as this? This is the exact same card. Altar plays around removal? Well, you're just flipping it before they've committed to anything. It doesn't play around shifter, right? Or does it send for cost? It plays around happy memory. That's actually it. I, I hate you, yo man. I hate this card game. It's awful that for a while Aqua Dolphin was your time win con Goki. Played against a lot of Goki players that would be like, oh yeah, um, hmm, oh, eh, mm, uh, uh, and take about 15 minutes to do their combo game one. We'd negotiate a long ass game two. Game three, all of a sudden they were uh, the fucking wizard of Oz when it came to Link summoning. You learned so much between games one and three. Shockingly, there is a double evolution pill target that does burn damage we used to play. Skyhawk, I am intimately familiar with Superconductor Tyranno because 21. 21's not worth living in. Destiny Hero Dystopia. I have fond memories of this card. Uh, it does have a burn effect. It targets a level four or lower Destiny Hero in your grave and burns equal to, I think, the attack of the card. Uh, I remember a local where um, we were going into game three uh, and I just made it to main phase when time was called. And I start doing my combo and my opponent is just yes anding everything I do. They're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess waiting for us to like... Uh, get to the tie situation. Um, and I'm like, dystopia effect, yeah. Uh, you know, um, and then I do a million more actions uh, just to like play around uh, whatever I think my opponent might have. And then I go, all right, well, end of main. And then he, he shouts to the uh, TO, he goes, hey, we tied. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. 
we very much did not tie. He was like, what? And I was like, yeah, dystopia burned. I wrote it on the life point pad. What did you think I was doing? Doodling? <laughs> Just want to give a special shout out to Runic Sprite Fur Hire, a deck with three time cards in the same deck one for each engine criminal shit when the time rules were first revealed people were really upset by them but it's cool to see how people have adapted to their permanent inclusion by playing cards like this now all i humbly request is a playable time card for rescue ace please this deck takes so long to win fairy box is actually what they could <laughs> you know actually we're gonna we're actually going to take that bit whoop and back in the head and it's it's just gonna we're gonna lock it up there